Game on, everybody! We are in the lower bracket, the loser's bracket of the Endgame Gear Masters playoff. Another best of three series, and today we have Enter all the way up to the top right of Conceal Till down to the bottom of the map. It is Neutron, his Night Elf opponent. Interestingly enough, already fell down into the lower bracket as well. Obviously, the players are fighting for a chance to make it to the offline event. And as I said before, there's 2,500 euros on the line in prize money. And there's additional hardware to win from Endgame Gear and AMD as well. And all of that goes to the four players that make it to the offline event. So we're currently in the playoffs. Eight players entered the playoffs. And only four will make it to Germany, to Osnabrück, to the eSports factory in order to fight for the victory. And today we're going to determine two more players to make it to that event and all of that is taking place on the 17th of August. The event itself is also open to the public as mentioned in the past so if you guys are interested you can stop by. More information is available on endgamegear-masters.com so feel free to visit the website and check it out. It's going to be a great day of Warcraft 3. We're going to have a couple of the old legends there. Hazops, for example, Taker is going to be there, a few others as well. The players of the tournament are obviously going to be on site. I'm going to be there too, and there's going to be a barbecue and just a fun day with Warcraft 3. So with that said, we have Enter currently going straight into the Death Knight again, all the way up to the top. Already graveyard in play, so they were going to get those fiends in action. One Wisp on the right side, ready for an expansion later on. But obviously at this point the focus is definitely going to be on the creeping here. And that poor Acolyte gets absolutely murdered. <laughs> the Acolyte does not only get killed, but there's literally a tree just hammering the wooden fist straight into its face to its demise so not really the fate that you want to experience as an acolyte there also means though that that ancient of war is pretty low not low enough that it's going to fall there or at least it shouldn't the death knight is obviously going to come in and try i mean if the death knight could coil an ancient of war which i definitely think should be a thing if you are unrooted, you should be able to call Nova the shit out of these things. But as that is not the case, that Ancient of War is obviously going to survive. Skeletons are no skeletons. Nice detonate here immediately after the Wand of Necromancy got used. So that already worked out well for them. And well, Enter at this point. Uh, getting himself a little bit of a bloody nose, uh, so to say. The first item in the inventory is, as you can already tell, the uh, circlet of nobility that we currently have here. Again, another attempt to set all of this up. Already we're seeing uh, the Death Knight just trying to harass as much as he can here. Up to the top, still one wisp hanging in the trees here, trying to go for some scouting information around the early camps that can be taken by the undead player. We're currently having enter himself with a tech into his uh, Nick, uh, into his halls of the dead and still trying to get a little bit of additional experience down here at the bottom by maybe moving in to take down some of those treants or snipe one of the archers. Problem is of course that the keeper is at this point already on level 2 meaning that we have entangle now as another ability for him and with that said he obviously has a chance to push that DM, the death knight a little bit more heavily whenever he starts to make his engages. Uh, at this point it's all about saving the wisps here and the good old gold mine game is still active. Wisp in, wisp out entire time here the tech into the next level has already started the tree of ages will kind of come up soon and neutron is literally using the exact same strategy that we've seen from him throughout the entire qualifiers throughout the playoffs as well already expanding now into a second base having him still starting to creep a little bit and very likely once that he hits the tree of ages we also are going to see again the uh, well, that's already the setup with the possible surrounds and the Staff of Teleport. Oh, doesn't even need to use the Staff of Teleportation. He's able to bully his way out here. Uh, nice attempt of taking the Archer down. And the Turtle is actually getting the experience here. Uh, that Turtle is going to level up at some point. <laughs> Not anytime soon, though. But yeah, as I was about to say, what we're going to see uh, once the Tree of Ages is reached is very likely going to be another Demon Hunter opening here for him. That's at least what we can assume. So with that, the mana drain is going to become a very quick reality. But that turtle needs to be taken out eventually. I'm actually a little bit surprised that he didn't take it earlier. There was definitely a chance for the undead to get some experience for himself. But so far on Concealed Hill, the only thing that we are seeing and to do is trying to use those healing fountains to get some of the hit points back that he just lost 
throughout this entire engagement. That's one of the beautiful things obviously on the map here with early harass you can always then retreat to the healing fountains during nighttime and ensure that you are getting your HP back. It's not really any kind of secret what Neutron is going to do here. The strategy that he is playing here has been played by him in, as I said, literally every single Night Elf vs. Undead game in the past few weeks. So Enter knows exactly what he's up against and is currently trying to slow down the expansion a little bit and ideally also get the Gnoll Overseer here with the quick coil. So far, that's not quite the case. I mean, it's getting low. 200 HP so far, a little bit less, and he's going to be able to get it. One more hit, and Enter is not able to catch the experience, if I'm not mistaken here. Yeah, had already level 2 previously. And with that, we're now seeing him, at least with the item, Crystal Ball for him. And a lot of aggression, actually, again. Ooh, steals another one away. Nicely done here. But it's also getting perched by those Gnoll Assassins. That tree is not looking too healthy. Honestly, I'm currently wondering if Enter would have been able to maybe take one down of the Wisps. The chances that that tree would have fallen are pretty high, to be honest. So, yeah. It's actually a little bit of a tough one. I mean, hindsight is always 20-20, but I think if Enter would have just taken down one of the Wisps instead of stealing the Gnoll away, that expansion might have fallen right there. So, for now, the tree is still absolutely fine. In the main base, we have now the Tier 2 tech reach, so Halls of the Dead is available, and the tech into the Black Citadel is also nearly done. We're having even the Lich in uh, play, and we can now see a little bit of aggression from Enter right now, as he's starting to make his way down to the bottom of the map to try and see what he can actually pull off there. With that said, we're having uh, still the Keeper out, and well, there's no Orb of Corruption yet, but you can still start to get a bit of damage up against him. There's obviously still enough mana ready for an entangle, so that can be used. And we have a three wisp, oh sorry, a three skeleton detonate by the wisp and mana drained from the lich as well. Pretty decent start for him. And guess who's back? Yeah, it's the blind guy. All right, so the demon hunter is back to business now as well. Second hero as usual for neutron in the setup, and that means drain, 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 and also means that that death knight has a problem. And that problem quickly turns into a kill, and guess what? That's gonna be the end of the Lich now, too. That's a really shitty spot for Ender to be in. I mean, he just lost both his heroes, and uh, it's, honestly, this is a disaster for him. Like, that's a total disaster. I don't really think he's going to lose that Obsidian statue, but despite the fact that both of those undead heroes were very low, one was on level 1, the other one on level 2, it's still a huge problem, because now the archers can absolutely reign supreme, as they are trying to get some experience for the Demon Hunter himself. And Neutron has nothing, really nothing that threatens him in any way for quite some time. That means his expansion is totally safe, he can easily also level his heroes, and has all the time in the world right now to set himself up for that undead attack that is eventually going to be headed his way. Because every single time you see these strategies clash, it pretty much comes down to a timing attack of, of the undead player who is attempting to attack his opponent with destroyers here, with ghouls, with fiends, and obviously with also level well, heroes that are hopefully level 3 for him at the point in time, which is absolutely not the case here. So right now, Enter is in a horrible spot. He's down to 26 supply against the 46 that we're seeing from Neutron. And Neutron has now two mining bases and can easily spec into additional upgrades if he wants here. Gets also a wand of mana stealing. <laughs> I mean, as if that bad boy isn't stealing enough mana already. He gets another wand there too. So now he has pretty much doubled the amount. We also have Hippogriff Riders in the play now. So the text which is happening with the double Ancient of Wind. Neutron definitely changing things up slightly, copying what we've seen Foggy do just yesterday to qualify for the finals in Osnabrück. By now, we're also seeing, again, the Demon uh, the Death Knight at least in play. The Lich is also going to come back any second now. But the hero levels are a massive problem. I mean, the Demon Hunter alone is already simply on level 3 right now, which is incredible to begin with. So, well... We're having still a level 2 Death Knight, 2.5, still seeing up at the top here, level 3, nearly level 4 Keeper, level 3 Demon Hunter, Potion of Lesser Invulnerability, 2 po Strolls of Healings right now, and Enter is <laughs> desperately trying to get some experience for his heroes. I mean, the Death Knight at this point has at least a Potion of Invulnerability that's going to help him if he encounters a similar situation as before, but only one Destroyer in the mix, and with 39 Supply, Enter isn't looking too hot here. 
Neutron is sitting at 56, which in and of itself is obviously incredible. So now he's already starting an attack here. And that is going to make things really tricky. Also, that Keeper should easily survive here as well, especially with more mana burn coming soon. Ah, that's at least... Okay, the teleport forced. That's at least something that he just got, so he forces the teleport. I mean, it could be worse. But that's all time that Neutron is currently buying for himself. I mean, that's all time that he has. We have at this point still... I mean, it's a transition straight into additional fairy dragons that we're seeing. The base is still running. And obviously Enter is just desperately trying to get his heroes a little bit higher. He knows that the typical timing of his attack is not going to do him any good here. Instead, he might even try to go into an expansion. Yes, indeed. So an Acolyte is coming over. And all of a sudden, uh, the ball is in Neutron's court. So right now, if you are Neutron, you definitely have to sniff that out. And then you have to start being on the attack here. Which is exactly what he's going to uh, do very soon, or at least what he should do. Because at this point in time, there's not going to be an attack of the Undead player anytime soon. What the Enter is trying to do instead is putting himself onto a two-base economy as well, to uh, enable himself to get at least on the same army level as his opponent. But there are already the attacks, and in this case it's the Red Drake that gets attacked on the left side by the Undead player. Having also a bit more of attacking going on here with a creep in the middle of the map as the Orgolord falls. Ancient Django of Endurance, the TC Aura, has just been reached. Fantastic for him, Belt of Giant Strength for the Death Knight makes him a lot harder to kill, but it definitely doesn't measure up to an Aura item here. The Lich is finally on level 3 and so is the Death Knight. If that's going to be enough, that's a different question though. Demon Hunter is making his way over with an illusion towards the top left. And at least the Ziggurats are, st are done. The Haunted Gold Mine on the other hand, not just yet. So uh, this is going to start to become a little bit dicey now because this is literally the timing where the Night Elf player has to become aggressive. And there's no upgrades on the Ziggurats yet. That gold mine isn't done yet either. We have a bit of a drop attempt over here towards the gold mine. And that one is going to hurt. There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. There is not a single Nerubian tower. There's no spirit tower there. He is completely exposed. And Ente himself doesn't have a town portal. We'll have to make all the way back into the base. Knows what's coming now, of course. But here are the summonings on the treants with the force of nature. One acolyte down. Second one about to fall. He's just trying to snipe the base here. If he can take the acolytes apart, then that's definitely going to be an easy one for him. But actually, the damage is now on the demon under. He has a potion of lesser invulnerability in the inventory and can use it. Does exactly that comes out and that is another base destroyed or at least the gold mine taken out and in the meantime one of the fairy dragons was sent over to the natural and has taken down one of the ziggurats actually two of them joined the fun there and neutron is on 70 supply now and has a pretty decent time here for enter obviously it's a problem that he currently doesn't even have the resources to re-haunt that gold mine so he will need to do that soon but over to the left we only have four acolytes right now mining from the base that he just tried to establish and well we're still seeing the night elf player double checking if he can maybe creep a little bit more here also moving over to the fountain demon hunter if he would take the forest troll berserker would likely hit level four but obviously he also wants to get the base now and Ente is down to 46 supply. It's 46 supply against 71. And here comes the attack. And all that he has to do is take the Acolytes down. And that's exactly what he's doing. One down, two down. The third one about to fall. Level 4 for the Demon Under. Level 4 for the Keeper. The Undead Heroes both on level 3. The Death Knight at least will hit the next level in just a second. Demon Under with another potion of lesser invulnerability that he can use there. And he gets staffed out. Doesn't even have to utilize it. And it looks like we're going to see Neutron again with simply a snipe. He doesn't even want to fight. He's sitting there and he knows fully well that he could pot possibly take the Undead Army there anyways. And is tapping out, not having any of this anymore. He knows that the game is over. Neutron is just going to run circles around him. And therefore the Night Elf player takes the 1-0 lead in the best of three series here at the Endgame Gear Master Playoffs.
Game number two, everybody, and we are on Northern Isles. And the overlay is actually working. Apologies that we had trouble with the uh, over inter with the interface actually in uh, the first game, uh, but yeah, the map in general. I mean, Ente losing both of his heroes there just before he wanted to launch a timing attack against the Night of Claire was obviously a massive problem. And from there on out, Neutron played it extremely smart, sniped the base here just the entire time, and then literally went from natural to the main base to ensure that he would just always deny mining to his undead opponent while he himself was mining from two bases and uh, realized too that there was just no way for him to come back into the game. I mean Neutron pretty much doubled his income, doubled the army size, had much better heroes too, so ended tapping out there and now focusing his attention onto game number two in this best of three series. Now Enter has to win two in a row. If he loses here, he's out of the tournament and Neutron would advance to the next round of the loser's bracket, still having a chance to qualify for the offline event. But the German undead player has obviously hopes that he will be able to win two games in a row, starting off with the Death Knight again. Now down here we're having the Ancient of War already built towards the camp. Now with all of the uh, distances on the map, the cool thing for Night Elf player is that he can literally against an undead easily take the camp there before the Death Knight arrives and will then also be able to hit level 2 with that. Against a lot of other races you will see a creep ladder down to the bottom at the smaller camp, but in this case against an undead you know that the Death Knight is going to arrive late and therefore that's likely what we're going to see which is obviously also why the acolyte is going to be sent right over to exactly that spot because enter is well aware how the creep pattern of the night elf is going to look like here but this is perfect actually for a night elf player because by the time that the death knight arrives the night elf's keeper will already have reached level two which means that outside of him rocking treants he's also in a spot where he can then rely on entangle and really pressure the death knight if the death knight is trying to harass here. The well, setup is already on its way. Death Knight is starting to make his way over too. Here comes immediately the Keeper, gets the kills in against the Acolyte, and well, there's already the item taken. Wand of Mana stealing for him as we're having him taking down the Tusker Warrior. Actually, that tree for a second was also a little bit low, but yeah, there's the attack. And in this case, I gotta say that he's cutting it a little bit close because of him attacking the Acolyte. We're actually seeing Enter arriving in time. Haven't seen that in a while. So the Acolyte distracting this just long enough. Nice to donate there, denying the experience to the Death Knight. Mana was still used and he also dispelled a little bit more with it. So with 225 hit points left on the Tuscar Trapper, he is actually going to get this one. Nicely d Oh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, what just happened? Am I insane? How did he just get... I mean, the experience ended up on... Ah, the... Okay. So, th yeah. <laughs> sorry guys, I was like baffled there for just a second. So the experience ended up on the Death Knight, but the Keeper still hits level 2 because he was able to take the skeletons down. So, uh, my bad. For just a moment, I was just like, wait a second. Did he just land a last hit on that creep? Did that just barely not work out for Enter at all? But yes, it did. So, Enter gets at least the experience for the creep itself, but obviously, with the Acolyte taken apart and the additional skeletons that Neutron could kill, he still is able to hit level 3 with the Keeper and therefore has now Entangle available. But... <laughs> Yeah, that kind of shocked me for just a second. And, I mean, you gotta actually give some credit here to uh, the Anna player. I mean, obviously he's kind of used to arriving at that spot a little bit too late, but especially through the Acolyte delaying this slightly, he was able to claim at least some of the experience here. Lost the Acolyte in the process, which obviously is slightly annoying, but still. We have now Gauntlets of August Strength in the inventory. And, well, in the main base for Neutron, the tech into Tier 2 has already started. And shocking! Uh, expansion is being built as well. Who would have thought? <laughs> Never saw this coming. Now, I mean, again, jokes aside, right now it's just all about trying to harass you a little bit, of course, too. The moon wells are also rather empty at this point, but it's currently night, so they're going to refill quickly. For now, it's just all about the expansion that Neutron is trying to set up here. Tusker Trapper this time goes down, and as an item, we already have the Pendant of Energy right there. So yeah, pretty sweet. I mean, already he's looking at great items. He has an increased mana pool. He has also the mana burn that goes with it. So he can literally just burn the uh, Death Knight whenever. Doesn't even need the Demon Hunter to be a pest here. And yeah, this is working out well for him. 
On the other side, you look over to Ente, and obviously in the main base, what we're seeing from him is currently the tech into tier 2. The Halls of the Dead has nearly been reached. Fiends are now starting to move in as well. And down here, the base is not really set up. The tree is making his way over as we speak. But more experience is now claimed by Neutron, and that means that that Keeper is going to hit level 3 pretty soon. So yeah, the tree hugger here was going to uh, try and cuddle with uh, with the forest a little bit more. Well, the claws of attack are now dropping into his inventory too, so a little bit more range damage for him. Definitely not going to say no to that. Still would expect the demon hunter to come out as the third hero. Again, it's a bit of a different style than what we've seen from Foggy and other players, but at least the transition into air is something that we've seen from Neutron, just only now in this series and not previously in the games that he played there. So the Lich again on uh, the making, getting trained right now as we have the Halls of the Dead coming up, plus the Slaughterhouse too. And Enter is deciding that it's time for him to reach a bit more experience as well. Already setting up a Ziggurat by the way, just in case there's an attack coming from the Keeper, who by now has also a Staff of Teleportation. Uh, trying to get into the base here. Yeah, one fiend is already taking position, trying to take that down as quickly as possible. And that Nerubian Tower is going to help with it soon as well. I mean, the entire idea is, of course, to take a couple of those Acolytes down in the middle of the tech into Tier 3. That would be the dream for the Night Elf. And if you can just take down two of them, that would be fantastic. No coil, actually. It must have been on cooldown here. He just was out of range. But that's one Acolyte down, and he's definitely going to try and get another one here. Ah, there's the portal out. Second Acolyte down. And honestly, that's a bit of an issue. That tech is on 50%, which means that for half the duration of the tech, he's only going to mine with three Acolytes here. So his gold income has been severely reduced by now, by 40% which is definitely not good for Enter. So his entire process is slowed down Your even further. And Neutron didn't really lose anything. I mean, obviously, a few of the trains were taken down, so the Lich has a little bit of XP now, came out and immediately uh, toggled a Nova. But generally speaking, the position for Neutron is pretty damn sweet here in game number two. And Enter with level 2 in the Death Knight, I mean, he needs more than that. He's currently up against the level 3 Keeper that is still pretty, pretty busy to get a little bit more creeping going. In the main base, we have the Demon Hunter coming up to just drain everything out of the under player and the Ancient of Wind already preparing for the switch straight over into Hippogriff Riders and then eventually, of course, also the uh, Fairy Dragons. Uh, Keeper. Also with a belt of giant strength right now, pretty decent hit point pool for an intelligence based hero. Gets also a scroll of healing to support any of the low HP units in case there is an under attack at this point. But we're having Enter, at least with a bit of damage thanks to the claws of attack plus 6. But uh, just in general, Enter still struggling here. Obviously rebuilding now those Acolytes and soon going, oh, actually going to go into Ghoul Frenzy. Okay. So, makes sense, shifting a little bit farther away from this. Fiends are going to be mainly used to drop the web here. And he's going to try and go up against the archers with ghouls and ghoul frenzy here for now. But it is actually going to be a little bit uh, crazy there. Let's see. Yeah, Demon Hunter already on level 2. Parap the Vitality now also taken. And it's archer time again. So down to the bottom of the map. No tech into tier 3 just yet, but we still have the Keeper. Ready to rock and roll. Already going straight up to the Shop of Wonders. Can uh, buy a little bit more there. Sells actually uh, the... Uh, well, actually didn't sell the Staff of Teleportation, but he bought himself now a Staff of Preservation. Switches the items a little bit around up to his liking. But yeah, level 3, level 2 heroes against 2-2. Two, two. I mean, this one should at least give level 3 over to the Death Knight. And he gets a one of the Wind. Okay, that isn't too shabby actually. So he can actually control now the Demon Hunter a little bit more heavily. And the one of Illusion is also not bad, especially in the team fight. He is going to be able to, uh, for example, create copies of the Death Knight to make it a bit harder for the uh, opponent's Demon Hunter to burn the right target. So it's not that bad. I mean, when we're looking at the Demon Hunter as mainly a tool to drain the undead army of mana, then having a Wand of Mana stealing now for the Death Knight, the Wand of the Wind, and also the Wand of Illusion, that isn't too bad. He also keeps his fiends currently a little bit more alive by just target, making sure that there's more around, so it's pretty difficult here to target the right one. So the item game has actually started to shift a little bit, but we still have a huge advantage in supply on the side of Neutron. He's 20 supply ahead of his opponent. Lich on level 2, here comes the army with the immediate focus on the statue this time, mana burn on the Lich, and the undead portaling out already. 
wasn't able to take down the tree but at least all of the wisps are gone so that is mining denied for a short period of time but it obviously comes at the cost of a town portal that he just had to sacrifice to set this up couldn't take down the tree which would have been the main goal here for him if he could have pulled that off with this now we're having uh, the demon hunter on nearly level three which will give him also the level two mana burn makes things even more difficult for uh, the under player when it comes to sustain sentry wards for a bit more vision never a bad thing to have and here comes the second attack from uh, enter this time actually without a town portal so he has to stick this one out he's already trying to take the uh, fairy dragon down won't be able to pull that one off but he could maybe take down this expansion already wearing the fairy dragon going straight into the mana flare same time though saving the rest of the setup and another fairy dragon is about to bite the dust yeah one of the wind already being used he has to play around that quite a lot but he's losing his fiends has only one more and this army just doesn't look too pretty right now hasn't really brought a lot of ghouls there either i mean a few of them are still alive but they're getting focused quickly and one after another is falling as we have the keeper on level four now and in and of itself is a bigger problem one of mana stealing use and countered by immediate mana burn on the other side fiend falls too and on 32 supply neutron on 58 and this is looking grim for the undead forces and this could be the end the lich already down ente is down one game in the series types gg taps out at is eliminated from the endgame gear master playoffs neutron advancing to the next round of the lower bracket still keeping his chances of going to the offline finals in germany alive hey guys thanks for watching today's video and i hope that you enjoyed the match and the commentary the remaining time of the video has been added to protect against spoilers caused by the length of the video itself but please keep in mind, though, that this does not only mean more work for me, but also has a negative impact on the popularity of the videos and the channel because of YouTube's algorithms. It would be greatly appreciated if you'd consider supporting the channel and help me to continue the daily esports coverage by clicking the join button below the video or supporting me through the Proterium page linked in the video description. Thanks a lot for the support and see you guys next time.